This is all the pick sets we carry in the store, right? Yeah. Why? What are you doing? I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to go over the different features of each one of the sets and compare them. Would you say you're being picky about it? Wow. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today I'm actually going to be starting with questions because I have a question that I think I'll get a long, little long-winded on, which, you know, that's a surprise to everybody out there, right? Um, so the first question that I want to talk about involves this MTM Case Guard shooting range box. This is something I've had for a long time and somebody tweeted at us with a question. Um, this is Bryson from Twitter who asks, how about a follow-up on the range box video? It's been seven plus years old. Uh, surely different now. And it is very different in a sense, um, but you'll be surprised, Bryson, that a lot has stayed the same too in there. So I've kind of always had a specific amount of items that I take with me to kind of support shooting. Um, and this, this range box is more, has turned more into a cleaning kit. It used to hold parts um, and I've since kind of organized those parts anal retentively, which you might have seen in a previous gear tasting. I think we went over kind of my anal retentive organization for AR parts and things like that. Um, and that's more what I carry when I'm, you know, supporting multiple guns. So if I go shooting with buddies or something, I'm more than likely going to take that spare parts box because I could probably fix 10 guns with that spare parts box. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. And then with this, I could probably clean at least 10 guns, if not more. And it, this kind of supports that because you have to have the tools to be able to you know, replace parts and things like that on ARs in certain circumstances. So that's kind of the, the goal of this box too. So I want to kind of walk through this. I'll kind of point out the things that I think that I might have put in since uh, the video. It's, it's a little hard to tell. I don't really have an inventory of what's in here per se. Um, my anal retentive just wants me to have an inventory on that, but it just hasn't happened yet. So um, that's where I want to start off is talking about this. So I have, ne I have yet to find a better range box out there. If you guys know of one, you know, throw it in the comments or something like that. But this MTM case guard range box is, I feel, still the best out there. Um, I will say that, you know, over the last seven years, um, the top has got broken a little bit, but it, it hasn't affected the functionality of it or anything like that. And I do always have to um, wind up taking or uh, replacing the handle because I always snap it off somehow and, and it's easy to put back in here but sometimes I'll grab it kind of in a funky motion and the handle will kind of come off on one side and I'll have to snap it back on there but um, other than that it's, pretty, it's really been holding up really well. One of, one of my other pet peeves is the indexing for the, the top lid so you can take the top lid off this box but sometimes when you put it back on um, it doesn't line up correctly. Of course, it did perfectly that time when I, when I talk about it. But um, sometimes it'll get like this in the back. So it'll, it'll kind of do that number, and I'll kind of have to align it a little bit more uh, to close it up on the sides. And the sides have these little snap latches, so there's a latch on either side, and that's what holds the top lid together. So I do like that feature quite a bit. So the top separates from the bottom and I'll go through the top first just to kind of show you what what is in this section too. So this is kind of where I keep the tools per se. I've got some tools within the bottom section but this is kind of the main segment for that or the main part for that. Um, so I guess we can just start with this area. You know, I've got a screwdriver because I um, I have different bits and stuff that sometimes do require a handle screwdriver, but I've also kind of got a multitasker that's down in the bottom too, and that's what I use sometimes to, to drive with as well because it's got a, a magnetic bit driver. And this is an older version of the multitasker. I think that um, Shane is redoing. He redid some stuff on the multitasker, and there's, I don't know if it's a new generation or not that's coming out, but it's, it's got some upgrades over the previous one. So... Um, I do carry one of those with me. So, like I said, this is, this is kind of this main section up front. I've got a bore guide. Um, so the, one of the biggest additions to this stuff is, you know, as you guys have known from previous gear tastings, I've recently kind of in the last year been shooting precision rifle stuff. So 
this box has kind of a, started to accommodate some of those things too, like different size patches for cleaning, you know, for the, for the long rifle and things like that. You know, I've got like the magnetic set that's in here with the bubble levels for adjusting scopes and things like that. Um, and then, you know, I've recently switched to trying to use some KG products on my, uh, my precision rifle, so I've integrated those into here too. Um, and I've I switched to using the KG4 gun oil in here. I'm a huge fan of Slip 2000, but one of my big gripes about that is that the small container that I like to carry in here always leaks. So I've probably cleaned Slip 2000 out of the bottom of this portion right here 10 times at least. And usually I leave it for a year or so before I'll go in and clean it out. But um, I do that from time to time as I'll come in and kind of clean house in, the, in this box. But that's something that always happened and it hasn't happened since I stopped carrying the Slip 2000 here. So I really like it. It's on my kit. Um, it's always in a, you know, a pouch um, on my kit when I'm shooting and stuff like that anyway. So this is more kind of a supplement. And I've got this old bottle of insect repellent that I put um, hops number nine in. So it's kind of like a spray bottle. And I've been fortunate that that hasn't leaked at all. So that's good because all this stuff is usually laying on its side. Um, this is a small Pelican case that I have that's basically got some extra screws and stuff from pistols. And so basically small pistol parts are in this thing. And that's what I carry with me there. Um, 123 batteries and one of these Surefire containers, a little notepad. Um, Q-tips are always great for cleaning as are pipe cleaners. Um, then I've got a couple of 9 volt batteries for my shot timer that I supplement and grab when I go to the range. Uh, these are some lens cleaning tissues, uh, cleaning brushes. And then in, what I like about this is that these two sections here are kind of lift off trays. So you can see that the tray underneath, or by lifting off the tray, it kind of exposes that, those sections underneath. This is kind of a large area underneath this side, and then this is a, um, a compartmentalized ver uh, section on this side. So in these lift-off trays, I won't really kind of pull all this stuff out, but you know, I've got some spare earplugs. I always like to have extra ear pro with me when I go shooting, just in case uh, my electronic ear pro fails for some reason. I always have a you know, an, an analog stand or backup to go to. Um, and I have started using different, um, different cleaning, what are these called? Four, four, snakes. four snakes, yeah. Uh, I have been using different things from another company that I will kind of flesh out with this kit eventually. Uh, but for now, that's what I've got in here from three different caliber, calibers, nine millimeter, five, five, six, and this is like a 308. Uh, which I'm now shooting the 6.5 and it won't work with that, so um, that's why I kind of shifted to using those other ones too. These are little tips for the bore guide for different calibers. Um, some gloves if I'm messing with something uh, parts-wise and I don't feel like getting my hands dirty. That's usually not the case because I'm always screwing my hands up and I never wear gloves, so needless to say these have been sitting in there for probably m multiple years and I've never used them yet. Uh, various punches and pieces in this area. Uh, Glock plug for the handguard grip. Um, then in the bottom of this, uh, I've got Loctite, red and blue Loctite, and I always, I don't even know why I carry red Loctite in here. I probably shouldn't, but I do. Um, then I've got some little cleaning rods, um, a, a crap ton of, uh, oh God. Alan Wrenches, yes, thank you. Uh, that's what I have Rob here for. Not only filming, but you know, when I forget shit. Anyway, uh, basically my collection of Allen Wrenches has grown over the years. As you guys know, when you get gun parts and things like that, sometimes they'll come with Allen Wrenches. And this is my de facto like throw it in this section. Uh, so I always wind up spending 10 minutes sorting for the right one when I'm doing something. But anyway, um, this is a, a piece to hold the upper and lower uh, of a AR basically a part. I like it for cleaning purposes. So uh, I found, I saw that on a Brownells cleaning video a long time ago and pick one of those up and I don't use it enough, but it's really handy because it actually sets the upper off just slightly. So it's, it's nice to get a cleaning rod into there. And that's one thing you won't see in this kit or, you know, long cleaning rods because I don't really carry those unless I'm, I put them in the Pelican case when I'm taking my gun or something like that. That's usually where I toss those. More lens cleaning stuff, um, chamber flags, um, side adjustment tools, things like that are in that side. 
Um, and then moving on to the other side over here, um, basically got a lens cleaning tool, a little Aimpoint T1 adjustment tool, uh, dummy rounds, uh, pieces for the hammer that I have that I'll show you in a minute. Um, these are those bits I was telling you about for either the, the uh, hand driver there or the multitasker. Um, Dilla wrench bottle opener, always gotta have one of those. And lighter, I like carrying a lighter because I carry paracord too, so I like to fuse stuff in the field. It's always handy. These are little lens cleaning things too, uh, which I've started using more of now that I'm shooting precision rifle. And then in this section here, I'm not sure where this guy came from, but that's a, that's a lube called Tough Glide. I usually put this on my knife if I ever clean my knives and stuff like that. Uh, in this section here, I've got kind of the tools that I kind of spoke about. So this is a punch set that I always take with me when I'm working on ARs and stuff. Um, and then along with that, that's kind of where that hammer came into play. I just told you about the bits for. And this is all kind of my cleaning rods and jags and stuff like that. I've also got a, an AR uh, wrench in there. Uh, just kind of various stuff. And, you know, I mentioned not taking a cleaning rod, but I do have kind of a collapsible one that's in multi multiple pieces that I have in here. Uh, just kind of for that that purpose that I may not take the full size cleaning rod with me. Um, so that is the top section and then the bottom section are kind of the, the bigger items obviously. Um, I keep instruction sheets so anytime I get manuals for sights, scopes, things like that, they usually go into there. That way I always kind of have them in one place if I need to reference something, if I forget what the uh, adjustment increments are for windage or elevation on like an aim point. Uh, I can always reference that. I always take tape with me too. It's good old 100 mile an hour tape. It's a military issue stuff. As you can see, it's kind of bastardized and I like hang on to every little piece that I can from this because I still haven't found a suitable replacement in the civilian world. Um, this is uh, Battle Systems tape. I came out with that a while ago. I very much like that still. And then this is tape to cover up um, to basically tape up a target, like an IPSC target. That's that color tape. And then more cleaning supplies, chamber brushes, things like that. I um, also have these pieces which fit right here nicely in the range box. They, were, they came with the kit and they were designed for this. So it's basically a rifle rest if you need to work on your rifle, which that's another huge benefit to this case is that ability to kind of have a bench location to set something at. So then the other nice thing is that somebody sent me this piece a long time ago and I apologize if you are watching this video and you're the one who sent me this because I cannot remember for the life of me who sent me this. Um, but it, it's a drop-in thing that they created for this range box so it fits onto the magwell for an AR so you can use that to clean too because this doesn't really fit an AR. This is more for kind of like a long rifle rest or something like that. So um, those pieces go with me in the kit. Obviously, I've um, got this old um, tube here from the military that I use to carry springs in. So I've got recoil springs, like spare recoil springs are in there. Um, I've got par that paracord I mentioned. I've got, you know, type one and type three paracord. And a couple of greeny weenies for cleaning. More cleaning supplies, more brushes, more cleaning supplies. Uh, another bore guide, uh, that's for an AR. And this is a uh, Dewey cleaning rod too, kind of a, this attachment here is what I put these on and it cleans kind of the star chamber on an AR. Then I've got some spare magazine, some spare PMAG uh, springs and followers that I have just in case. Um, there's a little hammer I told you about. It's a, kind of a little piece of crap, but it was cheap and it's the one I carry in my range box. I've got a full size hammer here in the shop that I use to work on stuff too, but this is kind of my portable cheapy hammer. Uh, pair of shears, always good to have medical shears for anything. Here's some more gloves that I obviously don't use. Some riggers rubber bands, because I never know when you need those. Spare ranger plate for the end of a PMAG. I have all these on my PMAG, so I carry a spare just in case. A break one, and then this is the, uh, the fix-it sticks. So this is a thing that I have gone over in previous gear tasting, so I carry a full-size fix-it kit with me. 
Uh, these are individual torque wrenches, so basically the torque settings that are on like my precision rifle need to have things specifically torqued to, so carry those with me for that. Um, and that is pretty much the extent of what's down here. So that's kind of my brief overview, of probably a few minutes into it, but um, I did want to kind of update what I like about this still and um, kind of what I feel needs improvement, which really isn't much. I still think it's a great case. And again, uh, if you guys have something that you feel is better for employing the functionalities and stuff like that, that this, this box does, you know, leave it in the comments and let everybody know. All right, next question comes from Phil M on Twitter as well. I have a number of medical conditions to manage in the field. Best kit for pills to avoid loose bottles. Great question. That's something I struggle with for a long time too. Um, I don't have medical conditions that necessitate me taking prescription medication into the field, uh, but I take other things like aspirin, um, ibuprofen, things like that. So what I've used in the past, this is my M9 bag. I've shown this on a gear tasting before, but I have kind of a, a pouch that I have for this. And what I like to use is something called an easy dose pill pouch. So these are easy dose pill pouches. You can, it's a little, maybe a little easier to see with this one, but there are clear bags that are pretty durable in terms of little Ziploc type bags that are out there. Uh, they're super cheap. I think like a pack of them is five bucks on Amazon and you get at least a hundred of them. And what I like doing is I like taking, um, oh boy, I need to update this stuff. This is my like grab and go bag from the shop here and my medications are really out of date, so don't judge me. Um, obviously, I haven't been following my yearly update thing, but anyway, what I like to do is I take labels that I, or basically I type up um, a description of what's in each thing, the expiration date, and the instructions that are on the box of the specific uh, drug that I'm putting in here. And this is all over-the-counter stuff. I don't have any prescription stuff in here. Um, but I like to do that because that way I don't have to carry around a piece of cutting from the box that I'm taking the medication out of or anything like that. I have this little thing. It tells me expiration date. Every, all the pertinent information is on that little piece of paper. You just slip that into the bag and it makes it really easy. That's a little trick I learned from the Navy. I had gotten some medication one day and I think uh, it came in a little Ziploc bag with that type of label on it. I was like, oh man, that's a great idea. So. Um, it was a corpsman or something that did that. So that's what I do with everything. So Motrin, um, even kind of this chloroseptic that I carry, the throat lozenges. So um, everything that I have has one of those little labels on it, and it makes it really easy. So um, anyway, that's what I like to do. Um, hope that helps you out. I'll make, a, make sure we have a link to that, those easy dose pill pouches in the description of this video. So if you want to pick those up, you can. Okay, last question today comes from Adam R on Facebook. Brian, if I'm going to get one entry tool set, which one should I choose to learn with and carry and why? Uh, it's a great question and one we get all the time over email asking about the differences between the pick sets. Um, it's always good to have a video walkthrough of this, so um, that's really what I kind of want to walk through with you guys. Um, and Adam, to answer your question first and foremost, what I, what I learn with and carry with is, was completely different. So when I first learned I was using picks that are similar to what we have in like our four-piece titanium set, which are like long popsicle stick-like picks. So um, I didn't learn with anything that was this fancy that we have with our, our set. And what I mean by that is that these have all come around from the Bogota design, and that's a, a, a triple hump design that works really well for raking locks. So that, that basis, and I'll talk about the original two-piece set that, that kind of came from that, um, but if I remember correctly, uh, Ramu if I'm saying his name right, Ramundo is who originally came up with the Bogota design, uh, which kind of simulated mountain peaks for, for those, uh, those valleys and humps in the, in the actual pick itself. So um, basically, the popsicle sticks that I learned on was, was some kit that I had that my grandfather bought me in a spy shop when I was like 12 years old. And I still have the set. It's kind of cool. I have it for... A keepsake or something like that. I don't use it anymore. I don't like those picks. Um, if and that's probably like the cheap set that you can find at the gun show or something like that when you're walking around. Um, but 
there's more modern things that have come around with lock picks and that's why we carry what we carry at ITS and there's a lot of different variations so it can be a little confusing. So um, I want to start out with kind of like the, the basic Bogota set and that's the two-piece set we carry. Um, basically what that has is two picks that look like this. So one's a single pick, so it's got a single hump and the other is a, a triple hump or a, a triple pick and that's the original Bogota design, a single and a, a triple. And then the original Bogota design had kind of a twist in there and then it flexed to kind of this angled piece that doubles as the tension wrench. So whichever one you're picking with, whether you're single pin picking or whether you're raking a lock, you can use the opposite one to hold the tension on the lock because that's how a standard pin and tumbler lock works. You have to hold tension uh, while you're picking the lock. So I would hold tension with one hand, rake the lock with the other or vice versa hold tension and single pin pick the lock. So that, that's a great set, but as you can see, they kind of, because of that twist that's in them, which makes them really nice to grip and use as lock picks, because if you can see, you know, when you grab with your hand, it's kind of a natural feel um, in your hand. And that's actually what I would suggest as a starter set to get the two piece set and actually learn with these because you get everything in one set. You've got the two piece set, you've got you know, something that doubles as a tension wrench, you've got a rake, you've got a single pin pick and it's all in this two piece set and it's a great set. This is what I would have loved to have learned with. I learned the hard way with some of the other stuff that I had. Uh, but this really fits your hand well, it's ergonomic, it, it fits really well uh, within the lock and is easy to pick with. So from that, we have two different versions. We've got a stainless steel version of that same two-piece set and we've got a titanium version of the two-piece set. The difference being titanium is non-magnetic, hence won't go off in a metal detector or something. But, you know, it's not a huge concern anyway unless you, you know, are really trying to be non-magnetic in an area that you need it in. Uh, because in most states, lockpicks are perfectly legal to carry. Um, we can link to a thing on the tool website that states the laws of the different localities if you're interested in that. So here in Texas, um, it's perfectly legal to carry them on, the, on your person as long as you're not in the act of committing a crime, then they become burglary tools. So that's kind of the, the law in Texas. So two-piece set there. Then um, there's a smaller version of those. So these are called our minis. These only come in titanium. And as you can see, they're a lot smaller than the two-piece set. So it's quite a bit smaller of a set. They can fit into different, different locations a lot easier uh, because of the size. Um, although I would not suggest that mini two-piece set as a starter set. That's not what I would consider a starter set. So then we kind of have the opposite end of the spectrum, which is you know, that popsicle stick style I talked about. So we have a four-piece titanium set and what you gain with the four-piece set is that you get a double-sided tension wrench, which is nice. So on the double-sided tension wrench, it's got a smaller opening here or smaller side and a larger side. And that's for the keyway. So some keyways are sm uh, small, some are large. So sometimes you need a smaller tension wrench to hold tension on that, that plug while you're picking so that the pick doesn't get in the way. And that can happen sometimes. You, you might have a, a really small keyway, your tension wrench is a larger tension wrench, and now you're, you don't have the room to really rake or pick a lock the right way. So that's kind of why we have that double-sided tension wrench in there. So, and then this is the traditional popsicle, popsicle stick style that I mentioned earlier. Uh, they're, they're all made out of titanium, they're flat. Um, it does create a good grip, but again, you know, you've got that that slipping that happens sometimes when you're picking and therefore I like the, the kind of the ergonomic nature of the, the straight Bogota two-piece set versus this. But what I did find is that you can use Plasti Dip, so available at most hardware stores, and I actually just dunked this into Plasti Dip a few times and made myself kind of a grip on the end of these. So that's nice and it's a cool DIY project. We actually have a video on that if you're interested. We'll link to in the description below. Um, but the other part of the four-piece set is you get that single pick, like we have in the Bogota, you get the triple, and then you also get a double. So the double can be good for um, maybe locks that don't have as many pins. It just, you know, it's just, it's a feel thing. All lock picking is a feel, so it's just kind of a, a test on what you're comfortable with, what works for you, what doesn't. That's kind of why the option is there for the double as well as the triple and the single. So that's the four-piece titanium set. And then we've got an option kind of floating back to the two-piece again. 
So as I mentioned, the two-piece, it has a twist in it which creates that ergonomic handle. We also have a two-piece titanium flat set, and these are just called our flats, and what's nice is they don't have the twist. So while it's great for ergonomic purposes, it's not good for storage like I mentioned. So I carry, um, this is what I carry on a daily basis. So this is my set of two-piece flats and I have these taped to the back of one of my cards in my wallet. Uh, it makes it really convenient to carry and I use a piece of Gorilla Tape so I can remove it and I don't have to worry about um, too much um, sticky residue basically on the back side of the card. The Gorilla Tape is pretty good at, at not leaving that sticky residue plus it's a stronger tape and that's why I like it. I can reuse it over and over again getting picks out. So that's how I carry them. Um, same features as the Bogota two-piece but they're flats and I think that this is this would be more of, I wouldn't even say advanced, this would be more not a starter pick. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. So that's the two piece. And then we also have something called our entry cards. So our entry cards are basically that same two piece design. So you've got the, the triple and the single. So the entry cards have a triple and a single and you basically pop them out. So this is a, an example of our titanium entry card that all the tools are popped out on. So they're more, like this. So you can see you lack like the big popsicle handle and you also lack the ergonomic grip and you actually have less surface area to grab than the flats on these. So these I would say is more of uh, are more of an emergency pick set. It's not the best to pick with um, because of the nature of the way that we have to cut these out. Um, anytime you have a piece of aluminum or titanium in these examples, we have an aluminum and a titanium version of the entry card set, you get rough edges and rough edges aren't always the best for picking with. So yes, you can pick a lock with these. I would call them more of an emergency pick though. So this is great to stash in a wallet um, if you don't plan on using them a lot. Um, because I pick so many locks and people know that, I always get calls from friends and buddies like, hey, I need help getting into this or that. And that's why I carry the flats because I'm usually always, I use them on a regular basis. And I don't mean to say I use them every day, but you know, I do use them more often than not. So that's the entry card. And then we just started carrying, um, these are kind of newer to our pick lineup, are the Bogota Pies. So this is basically a card that you can keep in your wallet. Um, and it's got, as you can see, a double-sided tension wrench like this. And it's also got um, four tools. So this is a hook. So this is more like the single pin pick that is in the Bogota set, but you can see it's more of a hook, so it kind of lifts the pick from underneath rather than a hump to pick on, on single pins. Then you've got the double, the triple, and even a quadruple on the, on the actual picks themselves. And these are very much, you know, you also get the, the double-sided tension wrench, which is a great plus, but these are more like a, a mini popsicle stick. So the reason they're called the pies is because they measure 3.14, and the decimals I always forget, um, from pi, which is 3.14. So that's the measurement of these. And you can see they've got a flat kind of popsicle-like feel to them, but they, you don't have the length of the, the full-on popsicle from like the four-piece titanium set. So these are great because they're flat too and they're small. So they're great to keep in a wallet. Um, these would also be a great thing to tape on the back of a card if you didn't want to carry the full set. Uh, but these will fit into a wallet um, you know, as they stand right now. That's kind of why we included this. The, uh, the slip cover, you can actually put cards behind here. So if you wanted to carry that as kind of a wallet, you could as well. So again, those come Bogota Pies in stainless and titanium. And then we just recently started carrying the spring set, which I think is a, a really lightweight, cheap pick set um, that is great if you want to pick up something um, that you just want to kind of have. And it simulates making a lockpick out of a paperclip set. And that's what I've done in a video years and years ago, probably one of the first videos I did on ITS back in the day. Um, I showed you how to make a lockpick set out of paperclips. And you can, you can pick a lock with paperclips. It's very easy. Um, you're basically just putting in the, the bends to simulate the, the humps in a, in a traditional pick. And you can pick locks with those. So the pies come in a basically a triple and a quadruple variation and they're spring steel, that's why they're called the springs, and then they come with a double-sided tension wrench which actually has, um, I like this tension wrench a lot that comes with the springs because it has a, 
basically a smaller diameter for even smaller keyways. So it can even fit into tighter spots than a traditional uh, double-sided tension wrench can too. So that is the gamut of our sets. Just to recap, I would recommend picking up a two-piece Bogota set if I was beginning to learn lock picking and I wanted to get into something just because of the ergonomics and the ease of use of those. And then I'd probably graduate into something like the four-piece titanium or the uh, Pi sets, depending on where you wanted to carry it. And for kind of emergency purposes, either the entry set or the flats, depending on how often you think you're going to be using them. Thanks for watching Gear Tasting. Remember, use the pound tag Gear Tasting on any social media network if you have questions, and we will get them answered here on Gear Tasting. As always, if you like what we're doing here on Gear Tasting, please consider joining the Crew Leader membership linked below and allow us to give you back something in return for helping to support the show. Um, if you haven't checked it out, look at Gear Tasting Radio. That's our new podcast we're doing. That's kind of a spinoff of this video show that you all know and love. Uh, it's on, available on iTunes and we also have started putting out videos as you might have seen on YouTube, uh, basically recording the podcast uh, video feed as we're doing it. So thanks for watching.